Thank you, everyone. So, um, as a start, I would like to ask you what your feelings are if you see a picture like this. Any positive or negative feelings? Fear. Fear. Okay, so this is what um, a pull request, or in this case just a diff from a pull request in GitHub looks like. And uh, this probably means you are reviewing it, which is hard for a lot of people. So, um, what would you say if I tell you that there was something that made this confusing, I have to look everywhere thing look more like this? And give you a heat map of like problem areas, where you should look, where there's probably a bug. Um, and what if I told you that there was a thing that would predict 50% of your bugs uh, of the bugs in your project by just looking at 0.5% of the lines of code in your project. Does that sound good or helpful? I see some thumbs up. So that's what Linespots hopefully can do, ta-da. Um, first, who knows what a good commit is? Who knows what a hunk is? Or who doesn't know what a hunk is in a commit? Some hands, okay. So just to be able to explain the algorithm later, the uh, blue colored lines are the metadata, which tells you about who wrote the commit, when he wrote it, gives you a um, hash. And uh, a hunk is then what's marked with the big hunk. Um, that's just one part of code that's kind of like it, so near each other that uh, Git decided to make it into a unit. And that's going to be used in the algorithm, so I just wanted to explain that. Um, so this is how Linespots works. The idea is you take a project, and it has to be a Git project at this point, but generally you can use every version control system, I guess, and you iterate over all commits, and you have to decide if, for each commit if it is a bug fix or not, and this is not trivial, and I'm going to talk about that later. But... Um, Let's say we somehow know if it is a bug fix or not. If it's not a bug fix, we just keep track of all the movement of what happened in the um, in the commit, and that's it. But if it was a bug fix, we not only track the changes, but we apply a score, because the idea is if there was a bug fix somewhere, that means there was a bug. And if there was a bug somewhere, um, that means that area is probably complicated or someone wrote it when he was tired or... Um, it's just a place where obviously bugs will occur. And um, research has shown that if an area had a bugs in the past, the probability is increased that there will be more bugs in the future. So this is the whole basis of the algorithm. Um, for my study, I just used a simple keyword finder for the commit messages to decide if a commit was a bug fix or not. So, for example, at Koala, we use fixes colon uh, issue link. Or I think at GNOME, it's something like bug colon issue link. Stuff like that. So that's individual for each project, and it felt like it kind of worked. Um, so this is how the scoring works. Um, the idea is that every line in your project starts with a score of zero. And every time there is a bug that uh, is connected to the hunk that line is in, um, we increase the score. Ideally, we would increase the score every time we wrote a bug, but there's no way of knowing when I wrote a bug. It's just like implicitly known by solving it later. So in this case, there's a red line that is removed, so we also drop the score, and there are two uh, green lines that are added, and uh, those scores are increased. The first two lines are not changed in any way, so we just um, give them a flat increase, and the uh, bottom lines that are um, added use something, it's um, like the small calculation in the bottom, it's just the average of the hunk. Um, if you're like very interested in the ins and out, how the algorithm works, you can come to me later, but I don't think that's very interesting like for the whole group, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail on that. Um, the whole thing then is weighted by age, so newer commits um, change the score stronger than older commits. That's just to make sure that um, if you fixed bugs in the past and there's no new bugs in that area, we kind of decided that that area probably was fixed for now. 
and we shouldn't look at it even more. Uh, and this is what the result of the algorithm looks like. You get a list of um, line scores and corresponding lines in files. And this can then be used to, for example, create a heat map of your project or do whatever you think helps your project. Um, those, uh, those scores are not absolute, they're relative to all the other scores in your project. So for example, you could use it to look at the highest score, 10% of lines of code or something. Um, the interesting part um, for me was to figure out how do I evaluate if this works or not. So um, ideally I would want a lot of data using this, using this like on a group and have a control group that doesn't use it and then have like hundreds and hundreds of people reviewing stuff um, and see if it works or not and that wasn't really feasible for my bachelor thesis. So what I did, I created something I call pseudo future. Um, so this is what the history of a Git project kind of looks like. You have an init commit where you started your project and at some later point there's your head commit which is your now state. Um, and you can use this to go back in time and decide mm, I'm just gonna go back like let's say 100 commits and I call this now. And everything after those 100 commits is now a future you don't know anything about. Because um, in this case at the um, uh, the middle point, I have no idea what's coming after that. So I can use the following commits as a future that I have in my project and I, that, uh, that I can check against, but I can't um, influence my algorithm by it. Um, and what I did then was um, I used all the lines that were um, proposed by my, by my algorithm and see if in, the, um, in those lines there would be bug fixes in the future. And um, the what I used for this, and um, I wasn't really sure if this is the best thing to use, but it kind of sounded sane. Um, it's called hit density, and it just um, shows the um, ratio between number of bugs that are uh, occurred in the lines I checked and the lines of code that I used to find those bugs. So um, if this number is higher, this just means that I found more bugs per line of code I looked at. And I think that's what like efficient review looks like. I want to find as many bugs by looking as as little lines as possible. Um, so um, when you plot this, it kind of looks like this. The blue line is the proportion of um, bugs I've hit. So it goes between zero and one, which is then 100%. Uh, so in this case, I arrived somewhere around, let's say 19% of, of all the bugs that happened in the future. And the uh, red line is the hit density, which is the real interesting thing. So you can see that the hit density spikes very early, meaning that around 0 0.0001 or something like that, uh, we have the best ratio of bugs we found to how many lines we looked at. Um, and this was very consistent over a lot of projects. I'm going to show you a table with some numbers later. and. Um, it means that we can use this algorithm um, by looking only at very small numbers of lines of code. We don't have to look at like half your project to find everything, but we only have to look at very, very small numbers of lines of code, which is good because that's what code review usually consists of. Um, so this is the comparison with the Bugspots algorithm. With this, uh, what um, this whole thing um, I did was based on Google's Bugspots algorithm which kind of does the same thing I did, but on a file base, so you don't get a score for each line, but for each file. And if you compare both graphs, um, the Bugspots algorithm finds more bugs, but that's just because it proposes whole files. And it assumes that there is knowledge about parts of the code where there's actually no knowledge about. And the line spots results on the right side a spike uh, much earlier and reach their plateau much earlier. So. Uh, for using this, also you can see the uh, scale on the right side. Uh, for bug spots, we have a ratio of 16% um, of bugs found per percent line of code, and on for line spots, we have 2,000% uh, bugs found per line of code, which is pretty awesome. Um, there is another picture um, which is completely zoomed out. Um, 
and you can't really see how steep it rises. So this is just to show that overall bug spots looks to find more bugs, but on, uh, for the cost of you having to look at like 20% of your project's code, which is probably not something you want to do. Um, so these are some projects I tested with it. And uh, the green color just uh, is an indicator of uh, which um, ranking algorithm uh, worked best. So what this shows is um, I looked at 0.5% lines of code because that was kind of a sweet spot. Um, uh, under that, there's just the parameters I ran the algorithm with. And then there's um, some projects, you probably all know Atom, you probably all know GIMP, GTK, Nautilus is the file manager for GNOME. Um, and I ran a few algorithms um, over them um, and tried to find out which one works best. So um, what the numbers show you, um, for example, for uh, BERT, because it's the best case that I uh, encountered in my whole thesis, was that uh, with looking at 0.5% lines of code, I found 50, uh, well, almost 57% of bugs that would occur in the next 150 commits. So by just looking at a very small portion of the project, I could find almost all the bugs, or three quarters of the bugs that would occur in the near future which sounds pretty cool. Um, so what can be proved about the project? Um, and this is where this becomes really interesting because although it kind of sounds awesome to find bugs in your code so far, we haven't really, or I haven't really figured out how this can be used in real life because everyone I've talked about, uh, or talked to about this was like, this is really awesome. This sounds super cool, but no one had an idea how this could help someone although everyone thinks it's awesome. Um, so first, some uh, academic stuff, how, what can be uh, um, improved. So first, the uh, decision if a commit is a fix or not is a very vague thing, and there's the idea to use machine learning to increase the accuracy of that, but um, ideally, you would reach an accuracy of 100% for deciding if something is a bug fix or if something isn't a bug fix, because that's what the whole um, things based on. If, the, if these decisions are not made precisely, then everything after that becomes unprecise. Um, the next thing is, um, which a lot of people suggest, is tracking logical chunks. So something like um, functions or you, uh, logical blocks like if statements, loops and stuff. Because if there is a bug somewhere in a function, that probably is a sign for that function being complicated. So you better take a look at the whole function. Um, this was just too much for the nine weeks I had in my thesis, but generally I really want to try this, although it get, gets very complicated and has to be implemented for every language itself. Um, so far the algorithm runs, uh, is completely language agnostic and runs on everything you have that is text-based. Um, finally, we can apply some machine learning voodoo because at the moment you can solve every problem by throwing machine learning and big data at it. Um, one part with would be the is it a fix or not a fix uh, decision, but generally uh, I think I have received suggestions, suggestions to use machine learning in every area of this algorithm. Um, so if you have like cool ideas on how you could uh, use machine learning to make this better, please tell them to me. And there's like there is a list somewhere where it starts with machine learning voodoo, and then there's like a list of a whole lot of ideas. Um, and um, finally, I would really like to test this with people. I would really like to get projects to work with me to find a way to get this thing useful in real life because um, I think it could be helpful with code review, which is a thing we at Koala struggle with because we just have so much to do. Um, and if you would be interested in somehow collaborating with me or like just me running the algorithm over your project and then seeing if it has somehow helps or not. Um, come forward, talk to me here or at the Koala stand. Thank you. Thanks, Maximilian, for the nice talk. We can take some questions. Thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, 
is it uh, only you who can run this algorithm or is it open source or something? Uh, there's um, my complete thesis is open source. So you have uh, you can use my uh, the first implementation I wrote. I'm currently rewriting it in a very like much nicer way. Um, but you, the, the algorithm is open sourced, and the thesis and all the data I gathered is also open sourced. Can you talk again a little more about why you're looking only at the bug fix? sections rather than like feature commits and why the bug fix sections would be more prone to new bugs? Yes, so um, that is just based on the research I based my thesis on because they found the connection between uh, bug fixes occurring and there being more bugs in the future. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a lot of more signs telling you that there might be problems. And yes, like new features probably are prone to have bugs because they're just newly implemented or not tested. Um, so that would be another thing to look for. But maybe just like, I only had nine weeks for my thesis, so there was just time constraints. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, it was really interesting. So first uh, about deciding whether a commit is a bug fix or not. Well, probably if all the commits are linked to some issue tracker and issues are labeled as bugs or not, that could solve the problem entirely, right? Yes. And the other question I had, uh, did you check, can you tell if uh, well, what kind of bugs uh, are you looking at? I mean, uh, purely logical bugs or uh, also, well, bugs like misunderstood requirements, stuff like that. So there are really many different kinds of bugs, right? So um, I guess the, um, the algorithm doesn't care for what type of bugs you feed it. Um, and um, the um, research this is based on didn't go into detail on like if there is a difference between let's say typo, typos and some people argue that typos are bugs and some people don't. Um, I guess that it probably doesn't matter because having a typo somewhere in, uh, from what the research I'm uh, based this on um, told um, was that if there is a bug there is some reason for a bug to be there and that also leads to the probability rising that there's just more bugs there. So um, we, for example, um, try to label our issues with bugs and non-bugs uh, based on what kind of bugs we want to find with, because we kind of use this. Um, so for example, we don't label type typos as bugs because we're not interested in having the typo bugs in this algorithm set. Um, but if that would be something you were trying to look for, then I guess um, labeling that as bugs also works. Did that answer the question? Hi, Th uh, thank you, Max. Um, just wondering if you can locate high-risk lines of code, can you also suggest fixes? Uh, no, there's uh, that would be something that maybe, I don't know, you could then feed that into some static code analysis analysis thing. Um, but this is also not, like, this is just a probability if there is a bug fix or not. This is not saying there is a bug, this is just saying the probability of there is a bug in this line is higher than the next one, for example. So no fixes, sadly. Thank you for your talk. I was wondering, are you planning on making things available, like for instance, when you push a pull request on GitHub, so you would have a nice tool that will highlight quite nicely the line so reviewers can look at it? Or? Um, there's the guys at GitLab running around somewhere there thinking about using this. Um, so far, I didn't build anything in that direction, but I think it could be cool, although all the people I've talked to so far um, weren't sure if they would use it. So like the idea sounds awesome and I agree, but um, all the like people with money that I tried to somehow get information out of if this could be useful somehow weren't really into the put this into GitHub and make your pull request colorful thing. More questions?
So thank you, it was awesome. Um, there is something usually when you fix bugs, or sometimes you write tests. And as I understand how it's working, most probably as the code added in the test will be in a bug fix commit, uh, it will just increase the score of probability of having a bug here. And probably, maybe you, you write bad tests, but probably it's not bugs, it's just to ensure that the bug you fix is not happening anymore. So is there ways you avoid some kind of parts in the code because this is the mo most obvious one, but maybe there is other kind of things like this? Um, no, the, so like the implementation that exists um, is too simple for stuff like that. But I guess it would be rather easy to have like an ignore list that just looks for test files or maybe documentation stuff or something and just doesn't track them and doesn't offer them in the lists of stuff you should look at. Um, so um, when you say make a bug fix, then you, your scores around there go, goes up. Uh, is there any way for the score to go down afterwards? Or, or if you fix the bug a few times and that probably the code is actually fixed, um, would the score go down or would it stay up or? Um, so the, that's what the uh, waiting function is for. I didn't show it because it's just an uh, exponential function. But what it does is um, you run this. This isn't run incrementally, but this is just run once and you get one set of scores. And then for the next commit, you would have to, have to do it again. So um, for example, if you analyze the last 500 commits, then the uh, 500th commit in the past um, weighs less than the newest ones. So if there was a bug bug 500 commits ago and there wasn't or a bug fix and there are no bug fixes in the future, the scale score is um, reduced by the waiting function. Thank you. So, so in uh, this uh, exponential decay with time. Uh, how much do you only pick up like the most active recent, uh, the most active areas of the code compared to the most error-prone areas of the code? So if if you would analyze the C Python project, wouldn't you just have uh, all the the async IO stuff light up and all the the POSIX libraries be converted zero? If there is a lot of bug fixes in that area, probably because that means there is a lot of bugs in that area. <laughs> I, I mean because it's uh, it's time dependent, so it's how how recent the changes are, right? Oh, um, yeah, that, that's kind of a problem. Like generally this awaiting by time is not ideal because time is not a very good measure on progress because there's projects where there's a lot of um, commits happening in a short duration and there's project where it's like weeks or months of no commits. So even though you could have one commit two weeks ago and the next commit today and they are like in the sense of the project, um, they are not very far apart but they would be weighted very different due to the time um, to the time used to weigh the stuff. So I thought about using like number, numbers of commits to weigh stuff, but then again, numbers of commits is not a very good measure because some project use small and some project uses large commits. So that's also a thing where no ideal solution uh, is there so far. We still have time for some questions. So uh, you are assigning uh, each line some kind of a weight or score. I, I didn't get exactly how, how some lines were scored higher than the others. Some were zero 0.3, some were zero 0.5. Oh, yes. Um, you mean the example scoring, this one? Okay, so um, to go about it in a little bit more detail, um, the... Um, can you hear me without the mic? Um, here are the old scores. Okay, so uh, here are the old scores, which are the 0 0.3 for the first lines and 0 0.5 for the next for the following two. And here are the new scores. And the way this the new scores are calculated that um, at the top 
it says score increase is 0 0.25, which is just the random number I choose. This would be um, decided by where we are on the waiting function, so how far back in time we are. Um, and the first two lines are not changed, so they just get the 0 0.25 increase flat. Uh, the third line is removed, so the score is also removed. And the bottom ones are uh, added um, as new lines. So um, what is done is I calculate the average score of the complete hunk, which is done at the bottom and is 0 0.43, which is then used as the old score and then increased by 0 0.25 to the new score. Does it answer the question? Okay, so let's all thank uh, Maximilian again for his talk.